tell you what, I'll give you $250,000 for the whole company and a 3% royalty, but it's yes or no right now. Mark Cuban, the billionaire face we have seen in Shark Tank reality TV series. Mark Cuban, a remarkably successful American entrepreneur who has a net worth of $4 billion. In addition to being a multi-billionaire, Mark Cuban owns the Dallas Mavericks, Magnolia Pictures, Landmark Theatres, and is chairman of HDNet and HDTV Cable Network. So what is Mark Cuban's story? And how did he get there? I, you just adapt, and I was just always really competitive, and, and business was something that I realized early on that, that I was good at and that I enjoyed, and so I just gravitated towards it and enjoyed it. Born in 1958, Mark Cuban had an early business sense and tried different businesses in college that included bars, disco lessons, and chain letters. Well, we can't say if the businesses were successful, but what we can say is for a college team with a business in a bar and disco lessons, that is an awesome combination. So we can only try and imagine the fun Mark was having in college. In 1982, after moving to Dallas, Texas, he worked as a bartender, then as a salesperson for Your Business Software, a PC software retailer company, where he also got fired as he was hustling for a new client instead of reporting to work. Mark then set up a software company, Microsolutions, and it is this company that will start shaping his path to becoming a future billionaire after Microsolutions was bought for $6 million. So what was Mark's big break from millionaire to billionaire? Let's say, after having $6 million in his account, Mark's investment instincts were truly revealed. And since then, he has made smart investment moves. The first investment move, and what we can call his big break, is in investing in AudioNet, an internet radio broadcasting company that later became known as Broadcast.com. AudioNet, which turned into Broadcast.com, the, the math was different, the equations, you know, the calculus was different, it was like, okay, I'm investing a lot of my saved money into this whole idea of netcasting, right? Or internet broadcasting in early 1995 when people didn't even know what the internet was. That was all risk because I literally was putting everything that I had on the line for something. People just laughed at me and said, wait, audio over the internet. You know you can turn on the radio. You know you, know you can turn on the TV. Yeah, but you don't get it. Oh, that's just dumb, all right? You know, and, and so being able to overcome all that resistance, because remember back then, A, you had to have a PC, B, you had to know what a modem was and install it, C, you had to know what the internet was, and then you had to download a TCP IP client that worked over a modem and then connected to a browser that you probably didn't even know what it was or how to download it, and we had to take it on faith that all this was going to grow, all right? Yahoo later acquired Broadcast.com for $5.7 billion in stock. Now the smartest move Cuba made was predicting the dot-com bubble, where internet companies' stock prices crashed. So before the stock prices crashed, Mark sold all his Yahoo stock and he made a clean $2.5 billion. First of all, because I told you I traded and had a good understanding of trading, and I had watched in the 80s, you know, um, these PC companies go bam, bam, Eagle Computing, names you wouldn't even remember, go bam, bam, bam. Then I watched software company, WordPerfect, you know, Ashton Tate, you know, WordStar, all these companies, bam. And then networking companies, I mean, it didn't take a genius to say, wow, this might happen again. So this is how Mark got into the billionaire's table by making a smart sales move and predicting the market. His move was smart, because before the crash, Yahoo stock prices were at $163 a share. And when it crashed, it was at an all-time low of $8 per share. Mark sold his shares while the price was still at $163, a move that made him a billionaire. Otherwise, if he had waited until the crash, he would have only made $125 million. Well, that's a smart move. So what can we learn from Mark? This calls for attending senior classes in business if we are to understand bubbles. But from the brief story of Mark Cuban and how he raked in his first billion, the takeaway is know when to sell and when to buy and that each sector has its bubble. Don't wait for the bubble to bust. How else has Mark Cuban's story inspired you? Please show us some love by subscribing to our channel. Also, don't miss out on any new video we upload. Just click on the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching. Hope this video inspires you for your next big break.